Now that we have a thorough understanding for the roles of the divine male and female twin souls in regards to accessing divine knowledge from each other, let us look into the other symbolism within these cards and find what other information they hold for us. First, let us return to the magician, who is symbolic for the divine male twin soul in the ethereal form. Both the magician and high priestess cards are showing the divine male and female twin souls have not yet manifest into their physical state. They still only exist in their ethereal form. We see the magician wears a red cape, and this red material is symbolic for the divine male twin soul. And if we look to the high priestess, she is wearing blue. We will often see these red and blue colored garments representing the divine male or female twin souls depicted in religious paintings. The divine twin souls are often shown wearing these red and blue garments. However, sometimes they are worn on another person to represent the divine twin souls or even as just material floating or resting nearby. However, Whenever the symbols of red and blue cloth are depicted in a painting, they are representing the divine twin souls. The magician stands behind a square table, symbolizing that even in the ethereal form, he is more connected to the foundational characteristics. And this is because he has more of a connection to our sun, the manifester of the physical plane. Now let us look to the High Priestess card in more detail. We see that she sits on a throne with the opened Torah on her lap. And as discussed in the last video, this is symbolic for her ability to make coherent and rational sense of divine knowledge, which the Torah represents. The curtain behind her symbolizes the veil between the physical and ethereal planes. And she is positioned in front of it, showing she has more of a connection to the ethereal plane. And due to this, she is also more connected to the divine. In Michelangelo's painting called The Creation of Adam, we see God's arm is around the divine female twin soul, who in this instance is being represented by Lilith. This is symbolic for the divine female twin soul being closer to God and the divine. We can also see the red and blue cloth, symbolic of the divine male and female twin souls, being depicted within this painting. However, this connection to the divine is also represented in the eight pomegranates shown on the curtain. Eight is symbolic for the immortality of the divine female twin soul. And when we look deeper into the symbolic meaning of the pomegranates, we find they are also connected to God Consciousness and Orion. Let us first look to where they are mentioned in 1 Kings 7, verses 13 to 22. These verses tell of the pomegranates depicted on the two pillars standing at the entrance of King Solomon's temple, which represents God Consciousness. These are the same pillars also depicted on the High Priestess card, which stand for Yachin and Boaz. These two pillars are representing the gateway to the God consciousness of Orion. And this gateway can only be accessed through the heart, for the gates only open to those who are deemed worthy of immortality. If we look to verse number 20, it says, The capitals of both pillars above the bowl-shaped part next to the network were the 200 pomegranates in rows all around. Now, if we look to the number keys we have from ancient Egypt, 20 is shown to us as one of the numbers connected to the heart. However, you will also note that the number eight is related to the heart too, as is the sun. And we see a cross is also depicted on the chest of the high priestess. This is also showing the connection of the sun and the heart. It is also interesting to note that the heart of a human fetus beats for the first time on the 20th day. There is also a connection between the 200 pomegranates on the two pillars and the sun, for there were 200 days from the Venus transit on the 5th of June in 2012 to the December 21st solstice. As discussed in the first video, this is when Horus 
the new son was birthed. The high priestess also wears the headdress of Isis, who is also symbolic of Venus. And we can see that in the paintings where Mary is depicted with the pomegranate, she is holding Jesus as a child. The pomegranate and the divine female twin soul are also mentioned in another verse in the Bible, with this quote from the Song of Solomon 4.3. Thy lips are like a thread of scarlet, and thy speech is comely. Thy temples are like a piece of pomegranate within thy locks. We can clearly see that he is speaking of the divine female twin soul. And if we look to Lilith and Mary Magdalene, who are symbolic of the divine female soul, there is mention always made of their beautiful long hair. And the verse 4, 3 equals 7, which also equates to the ethereal form. There is also a strong connection to the divine female twin soul and God consciousness in Orion within the Greek and Roman mythology regarding the goddess Hera, who is directly related to Zeus, being one of his three sisters. In Greek mythology, it is Zeus who is symbolic of Orion and God consciousness. Hera is often portrayed with the pomegranate in her hand, and the cow, lion and peacock are also sacred to her. So once again here with Hera, we see the female twin soul and a connection to the peacock, symbolic of the changing light bringing in higher consciousness and with it divine knowledge. However, with the mythology of Hera, there is a direct connection to Orion. For in the Orion story, Hera cast pomegranate side an ancient city of Antalya into dim Erebus, for daring to rival Hera's beauty. This is speaking of the waxing and waning of consciousness and the access to divine knowledge within the divine female twin soul that comes with the new light from Orion. There is also a connection to the pomegranate and divine knowledge in the Jewish tradition. For the pomegranate is seen as a symbol for righteousness and it is said that the 613 seeds of the pomegranate correspond to the 613 mitzvot or commandments of the Torah. Even today, many Torah scrolls are stored when not in use with a pair of hollow silver pomegranates placed over the two upper scroll handles. So we can see there is a clear connection within this symbolism with the pomegranates, divine knowledge and the divine female twin soul. Finally, at the foot of the divine female twin soul, we see the crescent moon is being represented. And again, this is because it is the moon that governs the ethereal plane and births the souls onto the physical realm. Hence, the moon is shown at her foot close to the ground. And as with everything birthed into existence, this is done with the female energy. And as such, this is also symbolized within the moon shown here on the High Priestess card. We should also note the number on this card and the way it is depicted, which are in Roman numerals. If we look at this number symbolically, it can also represent the number 11. Again, if we look to the number key we have from ancient Egypt, the number 11 is the number connected to the moon and the navel chakra. And as mentioned in the first video, Edgar Cayce stated the soul burst into the physical container through the Leiden energy point, which was located at the navel area. And we also see this in the inscription of the great high priest of ancient Egypt called Nepenetaru, which says, The West seeks to hide from him who follows his heart. The heart is a god, the stomach is its shrine. So we see there is a connection to the High Priestess, the Moon and the birthing of souls to the Navel Energy Point and the symbolic representation of the number 2 on this card also confirms this once again. So now we have had a look at the symbolism locked into the Magician and High Priestess cards in relation to the ethereal form of the male and female twin souls. 
In the next video, we will look to what their physical attributes will be before they are birthed onto the material plane.